and gentlemen, I'm pretty sure that we can all agree that Michael Patchter, who of course is the Managing Director of Equity Research at Wedbush Securities, is known for his numerous views, and if you've not heard of the name, you certainly will be uh, very familiar with it by the end of this video. Um, so in this Red Gamer Technical video, let us discuss some recent comments that he's made concerning cloud technology and the perceived power difference between the PS4 and Xbox One. So we're going to discuss that first, um, the PS4 versus Xbox One scenario, because it does lead us hand in glove to the next point. So before anyone rushes to the comments, let's uh, read this first. So. He said that he doesn't really think that the power difference in terms of the actual, you know, real life scenario is actually that much. He said it's more of a headline than a practical matter. Um, you know, he basically stated that it's not like you can play the, the two consoles side by side. And he said, yeah, you know, maybe it looks better. Or well, some people will say, you know, one does look better than the other, but generally they run at the same speed. And he doesn't really think that the average person can tell the power difference at all. And he doesn't think that Microsoft is going to try to bring the power of the cloud to make up for anything. Now, before anyone comments, let's move on to the next point. He said, it's an interesting issue because once you move to the cloud, it's going to be one with the PlayStation Now as well. Um, basically pointing out that it's going to be the same thing with the PlayStation Now um, technology. That once you move to the cloud, all you need is a file, a client in your disk drive or resident on your console, but you don't really need a console. So why don't you just put the file... Uh, put the client on your Fire TV from Amazon and just play the game there. So console manufacturers are going to have to tread very carefully because it kind of makes the machines obsolete. Uh, if we're just working from cloud and streaming the file, we don't care what box it's on. It's just a file that's operating on a server somewhere. And he goes on to point out that Microsoft and um, Amazon have paid, you know, spent ridiculous amounts of money um, to invest in their cloud technologies. But he also points out that companies such as Activision are going to get all excited about this prospect. They don't have to pay margins to Microsoft, Sony, or GameStop, just for example. And suffice to say, if you think about it, this means that you'd leave the market wide open. You no longer have to rely on Sony or Microsoft to provide the hardware. And this, of course, goes equally for Nintendo. Instead, you could buy your device from Google, Yahoo, Amazon, pretty much anyone. And if you think about how little power the actual client would require, you could basically play this on anything. It's pretty much what the point is. Therefore, Microsoft, Sony, whomever, lose a significant amount of their clout, really. I mean, why would you spend all of that money to basically tie yourself into a device that is pretty much limited when you could just go with the cloud route? And so that's why they're saying that from their interest, from their point of view, it doesn't really make sense to do this. Now, I have some strong thoughts on this myself. Some of them I've already revealed in back in the day when the Xbox One's, you know, cloud thing was being pushed really, really heavily. might no notice that Microsoft have somewhat stopped pushing it. It's not that they've been like, okay, it doesn't exist anymore, but they've certainly let it take a back seat a little bit compared to what it had. In fact, a lot of it, to begin with, it was pretty much constant with the cloud computing. Now, they're not really mentioning it so much. Now, so what are my thoughts on this? Because there are two key points, two key issues. Well, the first one I'd like to point out is I don't necessarily agree with the perceived difference between the two consoles. I have done graphics comparisons between them. I've seen them both running. Um, I'm sure you have as well. And there is definitely a graphical difference between the Xbox One and the PS4. And in fact, sometimes it is frame rate differences, it's resolution. Um, and as someone who's, for example, seen... Metal Gear on the Xbox One and PS4, there is definitely a difference in graphics. Now, I'm not saying it's huge, and I'm also not saying that it spoils the game. So, for example, if I had bought an Xbox One, I wouldn't necessarily think, wow, this game sucks because it's got less pixels. But on the other hand, it still looks worse. That's an objective opinion. It doesn't mean the console's worse. 
it just means that it's worse graphically. And I know that might sound exactly the same thing to some people, it's not. Because obviously the Xbox One does things better than the PS4 does, and vice versa, it's just the way of things. So that's not really the purpose of this video. The purpose of this video is the whole cloud. Now, it's true that Amazon have been pushing their Amazon Web Services for a long time. Microsoft, in fact, have also pushed their Azure technology, which is what's powering the Xbox One. Effectively, it's powering all the Xbox Live stuff, um, which, of course, is basically just a cloud-based system. You could fire up virtual machines, and this is very much what um, Titanfall and other games of its ilk do. In the background, it's basically just telling the machine, hey, you know what, we need you to you know, fire up and start a server. Not particularly complicated stuff, but um, in a world where cloud rules, I not necessarily agree that we as gamers actually win. In some ways we do, but I, I guess it kind of depends how it's all implemented, and there's issues with cloud. Now, one of the issues that I don't like about it is it's really reliant, and this is a bit of a a bit like me telling you the water is wet, but it's heavily reliant upon an internet connection. So in other words, if you're in an area where your internet just sucks, or unreliable, or a combination of both, or you're moving house, you're boned. You can't play it. It's that simple. Um, and you've also got to remember other issues with cloud that I've discussed heavily before, and I'm, I'm just going to briefly go over. Um, but things such as latency and so on are just definitely there. It, it does, for the most part, make gaming cheaper, at least initially. So, for example, for us as customers, we don't have to cough up $500, just throwing a figure out there, for a gaming console. Amazon Fire, for example, or whatever, could cost like $99, or maybe even cheaper, depending on the device. But the problem is, obviously, that that means that games, in effect, aren't ours. And this is one of the big issues that I've got with DRM, which is another topic, to be honest, and I don't really want to derail this. But the bottom line is that it can be great, like, cloud in a way, and this is primarily all TV is, um, at least online TV. It's pretty much cloud servers, and all of them just distributed, and you could pay monthly fees, and depending on what your fees are, you get different things. So, for example, in the UK, I happen to be members of uh, and this is Advertising, so just being, being honest, Now TV, uh, which is run by Sky, um, and I've got a couple of packages with those guys, and I've got um, Amazon as well, and I've got uh, Netflix, why? Because not all of them have everything, right? That's just kind of how it is. And I would imagine it would be very similar to cloud because there would definitely be some exclusivities there because it's just the nature of things. So, for example, I'm just throwing it out there, but I watch Game of Thrones. I imagine quite a few of you probably do as well. And I don't get that on Netflix. If I... It's certainly not on the US or the UK one. I'm 100% positive of that. Um, and I don't know about you know Canada or any other countries, but I definitely know it's not on the UK or US Netflix. And it's not on... The latest episodes are not on Amazon. If I do want to watch them on Amazon, I have to pay per episode, which kind of sucks, really. Um, and the latest ones aren't on anyway. That means... Pretty much, if I want to watch them, all I can do is use Now TV. On the other hand, Now TV doesn't have certain episodes of other things. So it might not have, say, um, one season ago, it might not have Criminal Minds. I'm just throwing out, you know, examples here. Or it might not have all the seasons of 24. Or, you know, uh, Netflix might have half a season of one thing, like one two, season 1, 2, 3, for example. But it might not have 4, 5, 6. Or it might have it in a limited fashion. You've got to remember this also goes for movies as well. I'm just using uh, this as an example. And so I think all the exclusivity and control is never going to go. Therefore, the problem I've got with cloud, one of the main ones, I mean, I've mentioned others before, such as latency, but I imagine there is going to be a lot of exclusivity there um, because it's just kind of the nature of things. And I feel that in a way, 
I, I would, I'd have to be convinced, honestly. Um, as much as it kind of sucks for us that Microsoft and Sony and Nintendo do have a lot of control over their console, but in a way it also works out really well because we know that for the most part it's not 100% open market. As PC gaming, it's a lot different as well. I'm not really sure how cloud would impact PCs because honestly PCs are significantly more powerful than a console, that's just how it is, obviously depending on the PC specs you've got, but assuming you've got a reasonably good gaming PC you're better off than a, PC, than a PS4, and I say this as someone who's got a PS4 and a good gaming PC, Honestly, if I've got the opportunity to play on both, I will generally play on the PC because the graphics do just look better. Um, but I don't really know how it would fit into that. And I, I don't necessarily know, maybe I'm coming from a, a kind of an old-fashioned point of view, I don't necessarily like a world, at least anytime soon, that has cloud only. I don't know. This is one of those situations, honestly, where... I can see both sides of the coin, and I, I like some of it, like, I can imagine the graphics and stuff would be amazing, but I also imagine that there's going to be a lot of inherent latency, and I feel the cloud right now, cloud computing definitely has benefits, like, what I like about cloud, um, what I think is kind of cool, and I, I don't even use the word cloud, although NVIDIA do, I I... <laughs> I I feel it's got a tenuous relationship with the term at best, but whatever. Um, I suppose technically it is, but um, and that is like the game streaming from uh, like a high spec PC to via Wi-Fi to like um, just for example Nvidia Shield or like a cheap laptop or like a low power system in the house. And to be fair. NVIDIA are not the only ones that are doing this. I think AMD are looking into the technology. I don't 100% know. Definitely um, definitely Steam are. And of course Sony are as well, where you can stream get certain games from the PlayStation 4 to the, um, to the Vita and so forth and so forth and so forth. This isn't really new technology. But I, I, I kind of like that in some ways, you know. But obviously it has issues. Primarily, obviously, what basically happens is every frame of animation is basically being um, compressed and then sent via Wi-Fi to your device. So, yeah. Not sure about how I feel about this whole um, comment, to be honest. I, I don't necessarily... I, I don't disagree with him. I do feel that Microsoft and Sony and so forth, and I also include Nintendo in this, but it's just so long to say all of them. I don't think that they want to give up or move to the canal yet because it isn't a good relationship for them, really. But at the same time, I don't necessarily know that we're ready for it, and I don't necessarily know how it affects us as customers, and I don't know if it's good for us as customers. And... I could do tons of research on this, honestly, but I feel that we'd probably be in a situation where we'd still be paying lots of money for different services and different um, subscriptions and so on. I guess it really depends on how all of this goes. Maybe if we're not renting, maybe if we're buying the games, who knows? But then I suppose it would be a very different model. And if you're buying the game, what would the prices of those games be? Because if you're basically streaming it, you wouldn't even own a physical copy of it, and you can't play it locally, and if your internet goes down, it gets really dicey in that type of scenario, at least to me. I don't I don't really know yet. I think we're on the precipice of definitely much better technology, but whether it stays local for a while, which obviously some analysts do, whether it moves more to the cloud, I don't personally know. But anyway, it's a little bit of food for thought. No answers on this one, guys. I just wanted to spark a bit of debate with you all. So I'm genuinely curious to what you think of this. I'm going to be doing my own research on this as well. A lot more research. But since these comments popped up, I wanted to make you aware of them. And I genuinely am curious to what you personally think of this. So let me know. You can either comment, of course, or you can... Post on Facebook, that's facebook.com slash redgamingtech. It'll also be in the link in the description if you want to comment there. Anyway, I'm going to leave you guys to it. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care and bye for now.